in any study of the Holy Spirit, if a pastor, a teacher, an elder, a deacon, a person who has studied the scriptures from beginning to end, from Genesis to Revelation, to understand the person of the Holy Spirit, then I think that they would have to admit that there are some things we don't know. There's quite a bit about the Holy Spirit that I think has been brought into the discussion that we take for granted because of certain parameters that we have set for ourselves to accept by faith some things that are written of the Holy Spirit, but also some things that we don't know that we have to leave it as God hasn't said. So I may share with you some things about what I have problems with in studying the Holy Spirit because sometimes when they talk about the person of the Holy Spirit, I don't believe in what people do when they get exaggerated about trying to make the Holy Spirit into a bird, a dove, a force, an entity, a, a sense, or like a spirit, you know, or the wind. You know, there's a certain aspect I do possibly believe of the connection between the wind and the Spirit of God, but I can't give you all of that because I think that it enters into a dimension of I would call extra reality or proto reality or reality that goes beyond our comprehension, our understanding that somehow there's some kind of essence that the Holy Spirit is that is life itself. That when God breathed into man and became a living being, he breathed into him the Spirit of God. You know, and the Spirit of God was there. And that's how God made man a living soul. And so in some ways I think of the soul as it is in man similar to and but not the same as but similar to the Spirit of God so I don't know quite how to express it all sometimes you know and I may not be able to get to it you know in this study but there's a lot that's not said about the Holy Spirit that could be easily misconstrued and so that's why we say that the person of the Holy Spirit is a person now we don't see that person obviously in heaven which is interesting because we see God and we see the Son but we don't see the Spirit but we see seven spirits before the throne so we do have kind of a interesting aspect going on that there may be something more we don't know than what we do know so how God chooses to manifest himself is for him to say and how you understand this will be up to you but in all honesty, because we don't want to be the spirit of error or the spirit of a lie or tell the untruth as much as we want to be part of the truth, is that, yes, we know that the Holy Spirit is the same as Jesus and that Jesus is the same as the Father and that being the Godhead, they are Father, Son, and Spirit. So they are the same and similar aspect, meaning that they are a personage or a person. There is a Father. Now, He is a Spirit. There is a Son, now He has a spiritual body. There is a Spirit, now it is a Holy Spirit or a glorious Spirit of God that is separate, an entity and a being Himself which has a personality and a persona and He is individual. And so we know that in that aspect they're the same, but beyond that it gets a little, a little kind of dicey when you start getting into finding the scriptures for that because then you start going, well, yeah, but... And you can say a yeah, but on a lot of things that people take for granted is when they try to explain the Holy Spirit as a person. So don't be surprised if you come up with questions yourself. It doesn't mean that you're wrong in having the questions. It just means that we're not given the information all of what the Holy Spirit is. And there's probably a very valid reason for that, that God does not want us to know. Because we have a hard enough time with just knowing Jesus, and we don't know Him and hear Him as we should where if we did, we would probably know once we were introduced to the Father, then the Father would introduce the Spirit to us. So, I think that, you know, the Pentecostal ideas of, you know, laughing in the Spirit, rolling around, dogging, and, you know, playing it with fire and acting like it's a fire or acting like it's a, uh, a, oh, I don't know, they make them up into so many different areas, you know, like some kind of, rushing wind, you know, I mean, the rushing wind is a good idea of the Spirit having passed through, but not being that is the Spirit, or that the dove, or that the, the gosh, I'm trying to think of all the different things that they try to use, you know, the, the goose bumps and all the, you know, kind of revelation of being force and power and gold and, you know, all these other things. 
yeah, that's all garbage. You know, that's just made up. It's just man making man into his own image and trying to create God into the image of man. So don't get carried away into that part. Don't try to make him into an entity that is part of a false religion and false theology that came from outside of Christianity and outside of the scriptures. Whatever the Bible says, that's what we believe in and that's what's true. Because God only reveals to us as much as we know. Now we can speculate, you know, we can have personal opinions and that's one that I have, not about all that other junk, but a personal opinion I have about the Holy Spirit is simply this. We know that the Godhead is revealed in nature. We know that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament his handiwork. We know that even the Godhead, we're told, that it can be seen in nature in some way. Well, if there's a root and there's a stem and there's a flower, or there's a root and there's a stem and there's branches and then there's fruit, then I would say that the Holy Spirit is like the fruit and the Holy Spirit is like the flower. In other words, I believe that the Holy Spirit, being that he's peaceful, being that he's loving, being that he's joyful, being that he's that essence of purity, that he's so pure that we don't see him, and he's so gentle and so loving we wouldn't really conceive of him, except that in the same way that a, pow a flower is seen, we can see the evidence of it, we can smell it, we can appreciate it, we can see the glory of it, but we can't really see it itself. And I think that the Holy Spirit chooses to remain not seen for that very reason because we don't appreciate as we should who he is so I have a personal opinion about who the Holy Spirit is and I have a personal perspective that I believe is confident about how God has revealed the Holy Spirit but for this study we're sticking with just the person of the Holy Spirit is the person as he's revealed himself in nature I would stick with the fruit and the flower because Jesus would be the branch and you know the stem and God would be the roots and the bark or the stem, you know, as it's extended from the roots upward and you know, growing. So that's how we recognize the Godhead as being a complete, you know, trinity or triunity. And that's how we are, body, soul, and spirit, the trinity, triunity, and then of the soul, you know, there's different aspects of it that have emotions and different emotions that are in play. Well, that could be how the spirit of God is when it comes to the seven spirits before the throne, that that is the person of him. Although... John mentions that he sees seven spirits, he may not completely understand what he's seeing. So, is the Spirit a person? There are certain things we need to know about the Holy Spirit in order to fully appreciate and understand Him and His work. The first thing is that the Holy Spirit is indeed a person. And we need to recognize this if we are to have a personal relationship with Him. If you think of the Holy Spirit as only an essence as only a force, as only a power, you will find it impossible to have a personal relationship with him. You cannot have a meaningful relationship with an essence or a force. You cannot have a meaningful relationship with an essence or a force. Have you ever tried to get personal with an electric socket? How about with a steam turbine? How about an automobile engine? Of course you haven't, though you may have named some of those, you know, and call your car a certain name, you know, and you may have made your dog out to be something more than what it is, but that's just you projecting emotions on them. The thought is absurd, and it's equally absurd to think of the Holy Spirit as an essence or a force or an impersonal power that permeates the universe, and yet hope to call upon Him in your time of need. No, the Holy Spirit is a person who has been sent by the Father at the request of Jesus to come alongside of you to help you. Jesus said, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, the Spirit of Truth. The fact that we can have a personal relationship with the Spirit of God should determine for ourselves that we're missing out on a lot that God said we must have and we do need. First of all, how well is your relationship with Jesus? Do you have that personal relationship? Are you talking to him, and is he talking to you? Are you hearing his voice, and is he hearing your voice? Do you have a responsive communication and interrelationship with Jesus himself? That's the nature of your salvation. If you don't, you're not saved. If you do, you're saved. Are you having, as Jesus said, he would introduce you to the Father, a personal relationship with the Father, separate from that personal relationship with Jesus? Are you interrelating with God, your Father, as intimately as calling him Daddy and Abba, and also as being a holy and righteous God that you have access to because of Jesus. 
You must have that personal relationship with God the Father or be developing that. Because that's why Jesus said he would do in you. Likewise, you should be having a personal, dynamic, individual relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. As the Spirit of God works in you, you should be seeking to speak to and to receive from Him as a person that gifts and abilities and that nature that He wants to talk to you, walk with you, show you, reveal, and give you a strength that you've never had before, tempered by His wisdom, His knowledge, His leading, and His guidance. Because He would be the one who would give you the ability to see the Son and to hear the Word of God and to know what it is as it applies to yourself. For without the Spirit of God, you cannot be saved. So the relationship you see is tripartite. You should be having a three-way relationship with God. Literally. There are times where you just pray God and yeah, all three are involved. But there are times also where you're praying and you may be noticing there's a difference between praying and having communication with God the Father, praying and having communication with God the Son, and praying and having communication and interrelationship with the Spirit of God. So, begin to recognize that and then begin to explore that in your study of Scripture as the Holy Spirit inspires you to go in that direction. For surely, Father, I pray that you would reveal yourself in a new and unique way, that you would cause the person that hears my voice to know that you are speaking, O oh God, and that by your Spirit you are leading them into a personal and intimate way of knowing you in a dynamic relationship that would never end. But Father, you would reveal your Son as you are growing that person in the knowledge of Him. And that Jesus, as they grow in the knowledge of you, you would continually reveal your Father to them. That by your Spirit that the Father has sent, you would have that relationship that you had with God our Father. And that we would come into the intimacy that you prayed for us to have as you prayed for your disciples. But likewise, God, since you sent the Holy Spirit, I pray you begin to have him open to us the word of knowledge and word of wisdom. That we would be able to comprehend the mysteries of God and even the Godhead. That we should know that it's not something that we cannot know, but someone we can have interpersonal relationship with. And so, God, I pray that you would lead us in that direction as you guide us by your Spirit, and as you fill us with your love, so that we would know the Spirit of God as a person. In Jesus' name, amen. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? Getting to know God more than you've ever known Him before. You get three for the price of one. <laughs>